Get those glad hands together. It's Palm Sunday, y'all. Where my sanctified folk at? Where my soldiers at? I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier, In yeah. The army. I'm a sanctified soldier, yeah. In the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier, In yeah. The army. I'm a soldier, In yeah. The army of the Lord. I'm a soldier, In yeah. The army. I'm a soldier. In the army. I'm a soldier in the Got my war clothes on in the Got my war clothes on in the Got my war clothes on, yeah. Got my war clothes on, yeah. If I die, let me die, yeah. If I die, let me die, yeah. If I die, let me die, yeah. I'm a soldier, yeah. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier, yeah. Where my soldiers at? Where my soldiers, yeah. Got my war clothes on. Got my war clothes on. Got my war clothes on, yeah. Put those hands together, yeah. God is, God is a good God. I say God is a good God. I say God is a good God. I say God is a good God. Yes, he is. I say God is a holy God. Yes, he is. I say God is a holy God. Yes, he is. I say God is a holy God. Yes, he is. Oh, God is a holy God. Yes, he is. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this way. If you're the you will trip the way, trip the way, yes, Lord. And it's moving this way. If your soul's not anchored, you will trip the way, trip the way, yes, Lord. You will trip the way. If your soul is not anchored, you will trip away. I'm gonna live right. God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm gonna fall in something. God can use me anywhere, anytime. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 Come on, get up out the seat. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, yes, praise the Lord, lift your praise, praise the Lord, lift those hands this morning, praise the Lord, whatever you are, whatever you need, give God praise, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Who's glad this afternoon? Trustee Rodney Thompson, Minister Stacy Dukes. 
Jamaica Johnson, God bless you. Missionary Jackie Jackson, our birthday girl. Missionary Marion Williams, happy birthday. Lydia Williams, Reverend Emmanuel Williams, thank God for you all joining. Happy birthday once again to the birthday girl, Marion Williams today. Who else do we have with us today? Amen. Ah, uh, yes, we've got Church One Waldorf in the house. Pastor Benny Duncan, amen. Prophetess Michelle Duncan, amen. God bless you, Maggie Smith. God bless you, Pastor Larry Brown. God bless you, Mother Terry Little, amen. Come, amen. We come to give him praise this afternoon, amen. Amen. God is great and mighty. Yes, he is. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. Amen. That our God is great and mighty. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Let all the people say how mighty is our God. Each generation will say. Great and mighty is our God. Is he great this afternoon? Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Let all the people say how mighty is our God. Each generation will say you're mighty. Great and mighty is our God. God bless you. We thank God for all of you joining today. It's Palm Sunday. Minister Lexi Evans. Mom and Pop Bennett, God bless you. We say Today, if he's mighty, why don't you give him some praise right there? Hallelujah! He's great and mighty. There's a difference. I'm telling somebody today, Deacon Jason Kirkpatrick, there's a difference between being great and mighty. That's a message right there. But the saints are declaring today that he's great and mighty. Say yes, mighty is our God.
welcome you. Because our God is mighty, yes he is. We welcome you. If this is your first time joining, give us a hello and a God bless you. That we might be able to give you a hello and a God bless you right back. Amen. Praise God for the Kirkpatrick family. Mother Mimi, God bless you. God bless you all for being with us today. Our young people praising them. We got started heavy today, amen. Had to bring it down a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. Because y'all know we would have took that somewhere in real church. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. You know I'm not supposed to say that. This is real church. Praise God. Amen. Oh, I should say with, my, with, with all my musicians with me, we would have took that somewhere. Amen. God bless you all. Good to see you. It's Palm Sunday. We thank God for this time of recognition of the Christian calendar. Amen. It's Palm Sunday. Amen. We thank God for yet another year that we can recognize the soon coming recognition and time that uh, Christ spent not only on the cross, but in death, burial, and resurrection with all power. Come on, somebody say all power in his hands. But we're not going to rush to Easter to Resurrection Sunday just yet. We at Palm Sunday today. And we I know we got some of our palm in the background here. You know, uh, if, you, if you remember church, when you were coming in uh, through the vestibule on Palm Sunday, they would give you a little something, amen. We can't give it to you in person today, but we're going to have to give it to you virtually. Uh, some of our palm that we've got uh, decorating the set a little bit here today because it's Palm Sunday, amen, amen. So you, you'll just have to look at the palm and, and recognize Palm Sunday. I believe some of, some of the mothers got palm in the house. Yes, they do. Uh -huh. where, where my, where my, uh, my gardeners at? Where my, where my mothers and my deacons, amen, and trustees that know how to keep a plant going in the house? Come on, somebody. Yes, indeed. You might have to pull a little piece off uh, today for Palm Sunday. Yes, indeed. Praise his name. John, the second chapter. I'm sorry, John, the 12th chapter. We're starting uh, in his word today, right where the Christian calendar lands us today. I know it's March 28th. I know we got the birthday girl in the house. Amen. Y'all got to give Missionary Marion Williams, a little more hello and a little more God bless you. Tell her happy birthday in the comments. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I know it's March 28th, uh, but we're recognizing and watching the Christian calendar. Uh, many of you uh, that have observed, um, you know, various points. Um, you know, you got you had your Fat Tuesday already. Amen. Uh, where uh, there was uh, a way that the church decided to do things you can tell this is man-made amen oh, i'm messing with somebody's spirit T fat tuesday is man-made yes it is amen <laughs> Pray praise his name amen because ash wednesday was coming uh we know we had to we had to get it in on on tuesday so you'd have your fat tuesday before your ash wednesday praise god amen and i know uh we've been uh going from uh, through the Lenten season uh, from the time we recognize Ash Wednesday uh, to Palm Sunday that we're at now. And, and we've got Maundy Thursday coming up, Good Friday coming up, and then Resurrection Sunday. Praise his name. But as we're finding ourselves in the calendar, we're not, once again, not rushing past this Palm Sunday. There's something interesting, and there's something that God has for us today right here on Palm Sunday. John, the 12th chapter. Grab your Bibles, amen. John, the 12th chapter. John, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. King James Bible, paralleled with the Berean Study Bible, I've got pulled up here. I believe God wants to share something with us today. Somebody say, speak, Lord, speak. Yes, indeed. Amen. Put that in the comments. Speak, Lord, speak. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, 
came to Bethany. Where's Sister Bethany at? Amen. Amen. From Church One Waldorf. I know I know she's up there. Amen. Yeah, we're giving her a shout out today. Amen. Uh, six days before the Passover came to Bethany, Jesus did, where Lazarus was which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Amen. Bethany, a place of renewal. Amen. That's a message right there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, a place of resurrection. Jesus was putting in the earth the very things that he was going to have to do himself and not only for the natural, uh, but for the supernatural, the spirit. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we, we, we might have to touch on this just a little bit today. This is not the full message, but understand that God puts in the earth the very things that he is enacting in the spirit. Amen. He's not going to cause you to have to guesstimate. He's not going to cause you to have to think about it or take it uh, at some someone's word no sir no man. god's going to make it so and he's going to make it evident uh in front of your eyes somebody say he's going to show me yes he is hallelujah we got to read on amen i'm about to get caught right at verse one uh we got a little more reading to do here verse two there they made him a supper and martha served but at, but lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him uh, the berean study bible says sat reclining at the table amen lazarus was uh, at in comfort amen his his time of resurrection wasn't a time of um uh, possible you know still uh, concerned about where he came from amen he reclined at the table amen uh, this message is about Jesus but we got to talk about Lazarus just one moment here amen sister Lanice Bennett amen pastor Lowell James amen God bless you sir amen Lazarus uh, was at the table with Jesus uh, meaning that uh, even though uh, Jesus had brought him out of the grave uh, he wasn't uh, sitting in a posture uh, thinking back and resting in where he came from. He was resting next to Jesus uh, where he had been brought out to. Come on, some somebody says, God, you need to bring me out. Amen. Some Whatever you're dealing with today, whatever you're seeing a constant spiral in, wherever you're seeing a constant spiral, circle uh not seeming to move forward uh you need to ask god to resurrect you from that space and place to bring you out and to bring you to the table where he's being served hallelujah we got to go on amen uh we're not even to the point yet but somebody's grabbing hold to that right that god bring me to the table holy god holy god yes indeed somebody needs to put that in the comments right there i god bring me out of uh my uh grave bring me out of my tomb to the table that'll preach right there y'all better not steal that preachers before i get a chance to go a little deeper on that amen but god wants to bring somebody today from the tomb to the table just like he did lazarus verse three then took mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Amen. Verse 4. Then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him in the very near future. Look who's got a, a bunch to say when he's up to no good already. Somebody need to say today, watch out uh, for who's got so much to say. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse uh, five. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Verse six, then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief 
and had the bag and bear what was put therein. That's verse six. We're talking about Judas. Uh, we got to watch out for people seeming to be concerned about those in need. Watch out. Oh, my goodness. Uh, verse seven. Uh, then Jesus said, let her alone against the day of my burying hath she kept this for the poor always you'll have with you but me you have not always verse 9 much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus sake only but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead. Pastor Tiffany Ann Chin, Church One Alpharetta, God bless you. Deacon Delroy Chin, God bless you. Good to see you. The whole Chin family, God bless you. Verse 10. It states that, but the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Oh, I'm going somewhere. God wants to share something with us here today. The priests were focused on killing folk. Lord Jesus, watch out, watch out. Uh, verse 11, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. We're going to get to that in just a moment. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm. See, we're getting to it. I told you we'd get to it. They took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of of the Lord. Somebody needs to shout Hosanna in the comments today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosanna uh, is the transliteration of the Hebrew Hosanna, meaning save, we pray, or save now. Amen. And it's done not in a, um, in a, in a timid way. Uh, the translation and the commentary states that it's done with a shout. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just like, you know, you can think to yourself, uh, there's certain things that you don't say in a whisper tone. Uh, there's some things that even if you choose to say it in a whispering tone, uh, it doesn't give the same type of meaning. You know, if I were to say, uh, you know, hooray. Or if I say, hooray, you know, there is a difference because of the tone. God's asking us today, check your tone. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to check your tone. You saying the right things, but you saying it in the wrong tone. Praise God. Sister Alicia Thomas. Amen. Believe it or not, uh, you in the message today, Sister Alicia. Amen. Uh, stick with us just a moment. Amen. Uh, yes, uh, there, there is something about Palm Sunday that uh, as we look here, uh, there's a lot going on before Palm Sunday than I think we maybe uh, choose to remember. Uh huh. When, when we think of Palm Sunday, we think of verse 13. Uh, but you got to jump back and start at verse 1 to really get uh, what the scripture writer is truly sharing and what God wants to share with us today. Somebody today uh, needs to know that God wants you to operate in excellence. Amen. Come on, somebody. Put that in the comments. Uh, it's not something uh, that's foreign to Church One Charlotte because we talk about not just operating, but operating in in excellence. Amen. Oh, uh, and you say, well, my goodness, where is this coming from out of John, the 12th chapter? Uh, it's coming from the understanding that excellence impacts your surroundings. Yes, it does. It impacts your time. <clears throat> it impacts your talent and it impacts your treasure. Yes, it does. Amen. Uh, here's what's interesting. 
Jesus uh, was operating in excellence because he understood the big picture. Yes, he did. Uh huh. Uh, he understood the end at the beginning. Uh, yes, he understood time. So therefore, he understood the actions of those around him. Jesus saw the end at the beginning, so he operated in excellence. What's a, another way of uh, stating excellence? Another way of stating that is targeted. He operated in a targeted manner. Yes, he did. He operated in a focused manner in everything that he did. Yes, indeed. Uh-huh. He operated in excellence. So as people were coming about him, people were attaching themselves to them, to him. He operated in a focused and a targeted manner. Yes, he did. He operated uh -huh, in a way that he understood what time was going to bring about. Yes, indeed. And those that operated in certain ways, he didn't think it strange because he was operated, operating in excellence. Somebody say excellence right there. Amen. It not only impacts your time, uh, it's going to impact your time and cause you to operate in certain ways because uh, you will understand as Jesus did his time was short uh, in the earth that is and he was moving in a way to make sure uh, his work was accomplished when you're operating in excellence you recognize time yes you do and you realize that maybe uh, whether you feel like your time is short you understand that what is going on around you are fleeting moments that have to be garnered in a way that they are not wasted. Come on, somebody say, stop wasting time. Lord Jesus, our excellence targeted focusedness amen oh that's what that's a church one charlotte word right there uh somebody added in the comments to the church one dictionary focusedness amen uh-huh yes uh to make sure everything he was doing had a purpose and made certain things come to pass jesus understood dominoes yes he did uh-huh uh, i can think you know we have this this seminary this theological conversation many instances about uh you know who was the most important disciple amen and uh and as you recognize jesus operating uh in a focused manner he understood dominoes i'm not talking about dominoes the laying flat type dominoes game i'm talking about the dominoes that you're setting them on their end in a manner that one will begin to impact the others in front of it amen jesus understood this uh, and when he performed miracles in excellence uh he understood it was going to bring about certain actions in the near future hallelujah yes indeed uh you got to understand time yes you do and how what we're doing right now is impacting what is to come my goodness uh jesus not only understood time but he understood his calling or his talent in some instances we can call it for the sake of the three t's today time talent and treasure uh he understood uh that his anointing uh, would advertise itself. I got to mess with somebody's spirit today that's spending more time advertising than you're all working. That's spending more time talking about what you're going to do than actually doing it. Jesus understood that when he operated in excellence, his work would speak for itself. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. To the point that he didn't even have to tell people where he was, but they would find him because of the work he had put his hands to i want to let somebody know today when you're operating in excellence you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money advertising you don't have to spend a whole lot of time getting people to like what you're doing what you're doing is going to speak for itself lord have mercy you've got to understand today that the excellence that god is causing and calling you to uh in this example on palm sunday is understanding time 
and understanding where you are in it. And not only that, but understanding the very gifts that God has given you, how you're supposed to go about using them. It was interesting. As we read this passage, as the people came to where results were, those that were all talk had to start trying to make up reasons to make up uh, um, uh, reasons why what Jesus was doing uh, was a problem. Somebody didn't even realize that it was the preachers of the day that were trying to quench the very miracles Jesus uh, had done. Pastor Kit, doctor, Dr. Kit, God bless you. Good to see you, sir. Uh, brethren, good to see you on this Palm Sunday. It was the very priest of the day that were saying things that I hear people saying today. Oh, uh, well, why, uh, well, you know, why can't we go back to doing things the way we used to do them? And, uh, you know, don't nobody want to have church uh, like we used to have church. And uh, ain't nobody uh, uh, believing in God no more. Ain't nobody saved no more. Ain't nobody coming to church no more. God wants me to let you know today, um, brother or sister Pharisee, uh, it's not that people are not coming to church anymore. It's the fact that they're not coming to your church anymore. Lord have mercy because what you're doing is somewhere where God used to be, not where he is right now. Lord have mercy. The people recognize results and when you operate in excellence, people are going to recognize results. You don't have to make up some uh, catchphrase. You don't have to make up slogans. You don't have to make up a bunch of extra stuff that, to try to get people's attention. The very work of your hands, Lord have mercy, is going to speak for you. Yes, it did. Why? Because you're operating in excellence with your time and your talent. Amen. Oh, we got to realize something here. Not only on Palm Sunday, Day, is God trying to get us to realize uh, out of this passage of scripture that we need to be operating in excellence uh, in our time and our talent, but also uh, in our treasure. Somebody say today, you got to pay attention to who's holding the bag. Yes, you do. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, you got to protect the bag. Yes, you do. Uh, even if you allow certain people to hold it, you need to make sure you recognize who's holding the bag. My goodness, if you're operating in excellence, there are those that will attempt to draw themselves to the excellence that God has placed in you for their own benefit, not for yours or the people that God has sent you to serve. The job and the skills that you have are, are a blessing and are a ministry in themselves. Whether or not you operate in excellence in that job, in that business, in that ministry determines whether you're going to be the Pharisees mad at someone else getting all the attention or if you're going to be at the seat seated at the table with Jesus with people thronging to get to where you are uh, because of the excellence that's being operated in. But here is what's interesting. Uh, there are going to be those that try to attach themselves to you. Judas, look at him. You and I remember Judas for the work that he's about to do. Uh, even the passage of scripture in John 12 talks about it and recognizes Judas as the one who was about to betray Jesus. But I want you to know that Judas uh, didn't just decide one day to betray Jesus. Judas had been betraying Jesus his entire time uh, with Christ. Amen. You would say, why would the author and the knower of all things, the son of the living God, uh, let a thief in his ranks. I want you to know because he understood time. Yes, he did. He understood that if he tipped certain dominoes over now, they would produce the outcome that was needed when it was needed at the right. Come on, somebody say it with me. The right time. Time. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Judas was not only a, 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 a sellout when it came time to betray Jesus, but he had been a thief his entire time with Jesus and the disciples. Uh, the King James Version says it a little too nice. It doesn't get to the point of it. 
Let me share something uh, with you out of the Berean translation. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, as we look at verse five, here comes Judas sounding like he's concerned about people. Verse five says, why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? This is Judas talking. Verse six, Judas did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief as a keeper of the money bag he used to take from what was put into it. Judas was concerned of why uh, that expensive ointment wasn't being sold because Judas already had plans for that money. Lord have mercy. He had not only uh, been responsible for holding, he was the treasurer for the disciples. Uh, he was the treasurer, but he was also a thief. Yes, indeed. And he was concerned about how much he was going to be able to take for himself out of of that bag you got to watch who's holding the bag come on somebody put that in the comments you got to watch who's holding the bag amen here is what's interesting uh it's obvious because uh if judas uh was acting in this manner it's obvious that his actions had already spoken for him uh long before then uh, those that were going to make a plan uh, to capture and betray Jesus knew who to go talk to. They didn't take time to go talk to a hot headed Peter. They didn't use a uh, time to talk to somebody that they knew was going to make a note of what they said. No, they went to who they already knew was a thief and a robber. My goodness, today you got to watch out and make sure you're operating in excellence uh, when it comes to the treasure that God uh, is giving you. How we let these areas be impacted matters and determines uh, if our mission will be fulfilled. Amen. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Somebody's saying today, well, you know, I don't, I'm watching uh, who I have around me. You know, I'm, I, I don't do folk as it is. And, um, you know, so I'm watching out uh, who's securing the bag. Amen. I'm watching out, uh, brother, cousin, Austin fears. God bless you, man. I'm watching and I'm making sure I'm securing the bag. I'm not letting any thieves come amongst me. Well, I need you to understand something. You got some thieves around you and you don't even know it. Amen. You got folk that's wasting your time. Yes, indeed. That's a time thief. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. You uh, start your day before you can even get started on what you're supposed to be doing. Your phone is ringing with people wasting your time. Amen. You, Your phone is ringing and your, your instant messenger is going off with people trying to garner the time that God has instructed you to use and operate with in excellence. Amen. Imagine if Jesus had let Twitter get him wasting time when they were having supper uh, at the table with Lazarus. Imagine if Jesus had allowed Instagram to get him to the point where he spends all his time talking about what he's about to do instead of operating and using the very gifts that the God the Father had given him to operate in. I can see time being wasted. My goodness, I can see, my goodness, Palm Sunday would have been on a Tuesday, uh, the way we do things now, wasting time, Lord Jesus, amen. But as we realize this, we are understanding there is a thief among you and you've got to recognize how and where they're operating in. Whether or not uh, it means, because see, one thing we're, we're in a big hurry to do is, you know, we say you got to watch out who's around you and get them people from around you. No, I need you to understand God has a plan for even the thief. Yes, he does. Uh, but you need to realize who the thief is because it'll have you looking sideways at people that are there to anoint your feet amen with expensive ointments amen and it'll have you overlooking somebody stealing out of your treasury hallelujah the thief has a point and a purpose yes he does but we got to recognize who it is when we're operating in excellence 
Yes, indeed, we understand uh, the very excellence that Christ is instructing us to operate in uh, is in time, in talent, and in treasure. It's going to make you uh, audit the books every now and again. Yes, indeed, it's going to make you say, well, you know what? Uh, where is this person or that person? Because uh, whether you know it or not, you only have you not only have time thieves around you, but you got people thieves around you. Somebody that God's placed in your life that needs to be nurtured, needs to be pulled out. We talked about it a couple weeks ago, needing to understand, as Isaiah 61 says, to bind up the brokenhearted, somebody stealing people away, making promises that won't be fulfilled and causing those that are injured not to be restored. You got a people thief around you. Yes, indeed. We got to realize that as we are operating in excellence, your surroundings can impact the call on your life if you don't have a targeted and focused approach to what you are doing. Hallelujah. If you have uh, uh, to start uh, uh, somewhere that seems less than opulent, that's all right because uh if you are operating in excellence uh your excellence is going to speak for you you can start uh, in a broom closet amen but you'll have your own place and your own space before you know it amen why because you are operating in excellence uh you won't have to take out uh three quarters of your budget on marketing because your excellence uh will speak for itself, the Pharisees uh, were busy uh, advertising what was going on in the synagogue this week, uh, but nobody was showing up because a miracle had taken place out in the street. Don't worry about where uh, your gift is being used. You got to make sure that as you let your light shine, the word of God says, you got to make sure you're letting it shine that men might see it and give glory to the father, which is in heaven. Come on, my Bible readers today. You got to grab hold to that, that if you operate in excellence, uh, you will be in a position where palm leaves are going to be laid at your feet. You're going to be in a position that you are realizing where time and how time is working in your favor. Might seem like this isn't a good news scripture that you can preach good news from, but it's the very good news. It's the very place that the good news comes from. Yes, it is. Uh, palm leaves were laid at the feet of Jesus as he entered into the city. Uh, look how uh, folk didn't come back into the city near the synagogue until Jesus came back. Amen. Amen. They were going wherever he was. They were speaking well wishes to him for the duty and the work that he had to perform. He had some hard work ahead of him, but he was operating in excellence. And because he was operating in excellence, he had a targeted and focused approach to everything he put his hands to. Glory be to God. Take this time today, brethren, to understand on a Palm Sunday that no matter who's around you, uh, that they are around you for a reason. But it's up to you, beloved, to make sure they are operating where they need to uh, and how they need to. Recognize Jesus didn't take Judas's instructions. Why? Because Judas had a place. Judas didn't get to come close. Even when Judas tried to say stuff that sounded right, Jesus understood where he belonged in the grand scheme of things. He didn't, you can't bring uh, certain people into confidence. They're the treasurer. They're the ones that you got to keep an eye on, amen? Because they'll be the one busy talking about stuff all the time so you can use all that talk they're doing against them and turn it right back on them. Uh-huh, yes, indeed. Well, brother Judas, since you're so worried about the treasury. Uh, let's do an audit of the treasury right now. Uh-huh. Well, Brother Judas, since you're so worried about uh, what's going on, uh, and I need you uh, uh, to tell me where you've been the last several days and weeks. Who you been talking to? My goodness. Uh-huh. I'm sure if that was a situation, if you turn that on those that have so much to say, uh, the conversation will end abruptly why 
because excellence is going to cause you to take every area into consideration, not just for the sake of doing it, but for the full understanding that it's the Lord that has need of the work and the skill that he has put on the ends. I take heart today, sister. Take heart today, my brother, because as you operate in excellence, you're going to go uh, from sitting outside to being brought in to inside and there being palms laid at your feet for easy entrance. Amen. Mud cart paths um, would get muddy over time. Uh, if there was any kind of weather going on, it would make them hard to traverse, but you could lay something down over top of it and it would make it easier to move across it. The palm today, God's saying, is representing the very place and the very space that God has prepared a way for you if you operate in excellence. Take heart today. Uh, be encouraged. Yes, indeed, because the excellence that others are not willing to do, uh, you're doing it. Other people are constantly saying, well, why don't you, uh, you're, you're doing too much. Uh-huh. And, and as you do it, all that, uh, you're not, uh, you know, where's the benefit for you? I need you to understand that somebody that doesn't understand excellence. Here is what's interesting in this day and age. Quality has become a commodity because so much is done uh, without excellence. Uh, it, it, people have become willing to pay more for quality. But God wants you to know today the way in which you're doing things is the very excellence that God has placed on the inside of you. Don't try to dumb it down. Don't try to put it on sale. Don't try to put it in some type of way that will be um, received because somebody that doesn't have your best, best interest in mind is trying to influence you to do it. God's letting us know today as we operate in excellence, the palm is being laid down before you. Even the hard work that is to come, it's going to be, be made easier. You're not going to be off track. You're not going to be going the wrong way because the palm has been laid before you. Glory to his name. Somebody today is realizing you're letting the thief have too much say in the excellence that God has given you. Somebody's realizing today and understanding that the scriptures have already given us understanding that the thief comes to but steal, kill, and destroy. If you put the thief in the wrong place, beloved, you can't get mad when he does exactly what he's been called to do. Jesus used the thief to perform the work. You today have got to do that very same thing. Jesus didn't run from the thief. Jesus didn't even task, didn't even run from giving the thief a task. But he understood what good the thief was for and used him that God's providence work might come to pass. God wants you to know today, people that are half stepping in your life, as you operate in excellence and they're operating uh, for their own accord leaving you hanging you need to put them in their place that didn't mean get rid of them that means use them for where they have been called to be used somebody today if you don't have a closer walk with christ today is your opportunity to say god i need your input i need your understanding i need to be able to garner this wielding of time and not just let things happen but make things happen if that's you today i want to pray for you those that have prayer on the prayer list we're praying today for aunt ethel choice amen and the whole choice family put your prayer request in because we're praying today that as we bring the sacrifice of praise we're operating in excellence even in our prayer. That healing might take place for somebody 
that's experiencing sickness. Yes, we're praying for the Choice family. We're praying for the families. We're praying for the Chin family. We're praying for those that have had procedures in the most recent days, weeks, and months. We're praying for the Barnhart family. We're praying for those that are in need of healing. God, we pray right now. You grant healing. According to James, the fifth chapter, the prayer of faith that heals the sick and raises them up. Yes, Lord. Not only that, but it forgives sin and it causes all things to be well. God, the prayer of faith we're praying right now. God, we're praying it for the choice family. We're praying it for the Barnhart family. We're praying it for the Bass family. We're praying it for the Chin, the Carter. We're praying it even, God, for the Odom family. We're praying it, God, for, for the Sellers family. We're praying for the Duncan family. We're praying it for church one as a whole. God, we're praying today that your healing take place. And we thank you for it. And it is so. Let the church say amen. And it is done. Come on, somebody put it in the comments that it is done. Amen. That's our church one Charlotte saying, uh-huh. That means that we're not just talking it, but it's coming to pass right now. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have a desire to give, give that it might be given. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to your bosom? Give now and expect it to be given this week. The very testimonies that we've had coming in are from those that have ex been experiencing the circle of failure, the circle of not enough, the circle of lack. And as they have made an effort to follow this passage, they are experiencing men giving to their bosom. And they didn't get happy and hit the mall. They realized I got to keep this cycle going. I'm giving that it shall be given. Once again, praise his name. If you have a need this week, so that God might bring it to pass. If you need prayer, so that it might be given, that it might come to pass. We want to say happy birthday also to Apostle Wayne Manning Bass II. Amen. Happy birthday to the founder of the Church One Churches. Amen. He's 29 years old today, amen? Uh, these young preachers, I got to watch out for them, amen? <laughs> Praise his name. 49, amen? Praise his name. God bless you. Pastor Letitia Barnhart, amen? She's 29 also, amen? Her birthday was yesterday, amen? And as always, you know I was going to call out Sister Marion, amen? You know, we done already called out my sister, amen? Amen. As we're wrapping up, join us this coming week on Good Friday, Church one is going to be together. Didn't, didn't we declare it? Come on, you got to stand on your declarations. Didn't we declare we would be coming together real soon? Good Friday, church one churches are going to be together in Northwest Washington, D.C. Giving God praise, honor, and glory for a good Friday. We're going to ring in a good Friday, y'all. You can join us on Facebook. I already know that there are going to be those that are going to want to join us in person. We're going to be letting you know more about how that can take place and if it can take place because of uh, us continuing to operate in wisdom. But the leadership of Church One Churches are going to be together 12 noon on Good Friday. You need to join us. Amen. Then on Saturday, Church One Charlotte. Y'all making your way back home. You might need to stop in Charlotte. We're having Resurrection Day resurrection egg hunt i think we calling it amen amen on saturday no i'm sorry on sunday amen after easter service we're going to be doing our easter egg hunt that many of you maybe recognize it as uh even as we give it different names and and different uh ways of recognizing it join us amen carwell bradford park from 4 to 6 p.m amen that's going to be sunday after Easter service, come on and let your youngsters wear their Easter best. Amen. We're going to have the church one banner up. We're going to be taking pictures of the young ones in front of the banner uh, so that they can show off their Easter best. Amen. Because uh, the young folk still know how to put it on. Amen. I'm looking for uh, my junior deacons. I got. I haven't got a chance to see them in a while. I'm going to have to make sure they're there uh -huh, because uh, I can see them now in their Easter best. Praise his name. You don't want to miss next Sunday. It's going to be wonderful. We've got our youth department. 
Y'all remember last Easter, how wonderful that was. You can join us again as our youth department. Want to thank God for Minister Lexi Evans, Missionary LaShonda, Leyland, Kayla, Big Layla and Little Layla, amen. Uh, uh, Lamaya, I think, is in there, amen. Uh, who else am I missing, amen? Amen. Sister Gabby's going to be in there, amen. Well, I'm missing one of the flag. Who else is... Lydia and Alana also. There we go. I knew I was missing Alana. Somebody was missing. But join us on next week. It's going to be a wonderful Easter Sunday. The young people are going to be rocking and rolling. It's going to be wonderful. And there's going to be a special message from, from God on Easter Sunday as always. If you don't know Christ in the pardon of your sins. John the third chapter the 16th verse says God loved so he gave. What a wonderful segue as you're giving showing your love God's trying to get you to understand that his love was shown in this way that as he loved the world he gave his only son that as we're recognizing him operating in excellence on a Palm Sunday his death burial and resurrection with all power in his hands on next week's resurrection Sunday if you don't know Christ as your Savior this was done for a reason because man in our sinful state there were not enough sacrifices that could be made in the earth to atone to have a connection with God. God being a holy God can't be amongst sin. So an eternal sacrifice in his son Christ was done that sin, past, present, and future can be covered. You can receive it today. All you have to do is pray this prayer. God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done things my own way. Now I want to do things your way. Save me. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you died for my sins. And now I believe right now that I'm saved. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved. You need to get in contact with us. Our contact information is in the description. You need to reach out and you need to connect with Church One Charlotte. Doesn't matter if you're in California. Doesn't matter if you're in Okinawa or if you're in South America. You need to join whatever church that you're connecting with. If you're connecting with us, we see you week after week. You need to join Church One Charlotte that the discipleship process might start. That the accountability process can continue. As the Holy Spirit has held you accountable right now. As he's knocking on the door of your heart. Letting you know that you need a savior. We're here to help and continue. And as scripture says, to come together to promote good works if you prayed that prayer get in contact with us that we can continue prayer with you every monday at seven bible study every wednesday at seven youth zoom every friday at 5 30 sunday service at 12 30 join us next week it's going to be a wonderful time god bless you continue to keep the choice family in prayer on that we coming to check in on you god bless you keep them all in prayer that God's will can be done and that healing can continue to take place. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Happy Palm Sunday.